We are talking about censorship. We are talking about comic books that are controversial because of some changes in the YouTube community that are coming. We have various types of threats to monetization and channels that make content that may or may not be child-friendly. And that has spawned this idea of this podcast, like the theme of this podcast and why I have Bueller, a friend who also has a YouTube channel, on the mic today. So the first subject that I thought would be fun to discuss is nudity in comic books, something more adult. What did you say? I, I'm pretty happy to talk about this, and I'm, I'm, I'm honored <laughs> that when nudity came up, he immediately called me, and that's just fantastic. So let's talk about it. <laughs> All right, Bueller, let's jump into it. Nudity in comics. Well, according to Comic Vine, the definition of nudity as it pertains to, you know, when it's part of the comic book medium, is the absence of clothing usually employed in fiction for either erotic or comedic situations. Now, something that's really fun about this website is that they actually break down instances of nudity in comics, and there's a hard number that they've calculated, and this is for mainstream comic books, ones that you can get on the shelves and ones that are less independent and more mainstream. We have over 2,600 different occasions of nudity happening in comics. And some of the occasions here are actually listed by title. So some of the ones we're chatting about, it's not necessarily full nudity, but it's the absence of clothing. So some of these are for artistic purposes and it's not actually like a full frontal or you're seeing something like genitalia or something like that. But some of them are as in this case here. So Saga, which is an image comic book written by the brilliant Brian K. Vaughn and drawn by the very talented Fiona Staples, it says here has over 24 occasions of full nudity in the comic series so far. I'm not surprised by that at all. I mean, Saga is one of those books to where there's a lot of nudity and strange nudity. And uh, if you're into that type of thing, I think Saga might be the book for you. In a very artistic and creative way, I might add. And another one here is Why the Last Man. I, I went to a Vertigo title here with 17 occasions of nudity. Last but not least, I wanted to also mention this one, Hellboy, The Wild Hunt, and Darkness Falls, both having six different occasions of full nudity in the comic. Now, when we have comic books have nudity in them, it's for mature readers, obviously, and it's been happening since the start of comic books. However, sometimes it gets past editors, it gets past publishers, and that's when things start to go haywire in the community as far as the collector's community. There are stories that are so good that just need to be discussed because it's fascinating. And Bueller, we should probably start them off with Tony Stark in Avengers Illuminati issue number one. That's right. Tony Stark is nude in Avengers Illuminati number one. There is a great big huge fight scene between Tony Stark and the Scrolls, and Tony doesn't have the time to put on his armor. Not only is he nude, but they strategically take the shadows and placements of other characters so you don't see anything, but he is definitely nude. And at the end of the fight scene, he is standing on top of a mountain and he is more proud than he's ever been, and he's on full display. It's classic and it's actually listed on a number of sites as one of the top 10 best nude fight scenes in comic books. Now, let's move on to one that's a little bit more scandalous. We're talking Green Arrow and Black Canary in Green Arrow, issue number 34. This is from 1990, Bueller. Like I said, they didn't hold anything back. And there is a big, huge splash page with multiple panels on the splash page. And many different scenes have nudity in them, not just minor nudity we're talking about full backside and there is a and i'm just gonna say it a nip slip in this book that's right it got past the editors and this is something that this book is known for and one that actually brought some attention to mainstream press when it happened now let's move on to one of the strangest depictions of sexual activity in comic books i have ever seen and bueller <laughs> You have never heard of this until I sent this uh, this picture of the book to you. No, I've never heard of this, and honestly, it made me cry because okay. it's just uh, it's one of those things. It's a doozy, comic fam. It's one that's known in the comic book community, but it's one that we don't like to talk about. But it happened. We're talking about World's Finest issue number two eighty nine. Batman and Superman. Oh, gosh, this is it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Batman and Superman. Okay, they're weeping. They're weeping and they're crying as they are watching a mating ritual between these leech tentacle species that 
live within the fortress of solitude. They're called the krill. And this tentacle species has to mate by going into each other. And it is the grossest looking thing. And Batman and, and Superman, they're crying because they know that they're going to perish after they experience the emotion and mate. They perish after the fact, and it brings them to tears. This is one of the strangest depictions of coitus in comics I've ever seen. Coitus in comics, I got to tell you, just look at the panels. I mean, like you said, it's nothing like you've seen before. And although the same mating ritual is done with humans, as far as what you described, <laughs> this is not very pleasant to look at. And like I said before, it brings me to tears, just like it did Batman and Superman. Okay, let's chat about the Electra recall. We're going to get into some recalled comics later on in the discussion, but I think the Electra one is a special one because it actually has a label of the nude edition on CGC labels, does it not? Yeah, it does. It's right on the CGC. It says nude edition on there. This comic is actually pretty widely available. There's a lot of copies of this book. The nudity happens on pages 17 and 18, and it features Electra, obviously. We're talking about the Marvel Knights Electra from Volume 2, Issue Number 3. And if you look at page 17 and 18, you will see in the recalled editions a nude Electra. Now, they ended up reprinting this with the same cover, but they added underwear to her body. Now, it's estimated that there's a low 5,000 of these comic books that actually hit the stands, and a little over 400 of which have actually hit the CGC census. But there are a low 500 comic books that were done through like dynamic forces. Are you familiar with these variants, Bueller? I am a little bit. I actually have a few dynamic forces in my collection. I do not have this book, but I want to pick one up because it sounds interesting and honestly... Who wouldn't like to have Electra, a nude version of that book? Yeah, I'll it's, take one. it's a little different. And the Dynamic Forces were signed by Greg Horn, and they were released with the first batch. So likely that most, if not all, were all sent out with the nude panels. Now, let's move on to one of my favorite comic books to have nudity inside of it because of something that happened in 2010. It's funny. It's it, 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 in a way, in a way it's not okay, but just the, the quotes here are, they made me chuckle because we're talking about the specter. We're talking about the specter and unfortunately it nudity crept its way into that book. And it's a, such a great story. And we read about this. We talked about it before. And I got to tell you, I'm a parent and this was actually kind of discovered by a child found this nudity. And I can't think of another time when this was brought up. We're talking about Spectre issue number nine from back in 1987. Now, I know this to be obviously from a classic run, but I own multiple copies of this, not because of the nude panel, but because this is a Mignola cover. He actually did a couple of these covers in this run. And being a Mignola enthusiast, I had a bunch of copies. But what I didn't know that is back in 2010, a Utah boy was purchased a stack of books that came from the Dollar Tree. And in this stack of books was this Spectre issue number nine. Yeah, a Utah mother bought these books for her son at a Dollar Tree of all places. Gave them to her son. He went home, started flipping through these books. On the very first page of Spectre number nine, there it was, nudity in the comic book. The kid felt a little uncomfortable, but he did the right thing, and he went and told an adult right away, and I actually have a quote from what he said. That's right. Bleeding Cool reported on this back in 2010. What did this mother say? Well, the mother herself didn't feel comfortable at all. She actually said it really embarrassed me because I had given a 10-year-old boy this book. I seen the naked lady, and I got mad. <laughs> 10-year-old Sheldon Conley, loves, who loves comic books but knew something was wrong when he opened The Spectre, he says, I just turned the page and I seen the naked ladies, so I handed it to a grown-up and said, hey, look at this. <laughs> so fortunately, Sheldon was able to put this comic away and give it back to his mother and, you know, can, can grow up without, you know, The Spectre messing up his youth. He can save it for maybe later on in his life. But it's instances like this that we're trying to prevent, right? Not all comic books are for kids. And I think that's a big part of this conversation, isn't it? It is. And, you know, as a parent myself, my kids are older now, but at that age when they were 10 or 11 or 9 years old, 
that's what we do. We're in protection mode. We're trying to protect our kids from stuff like this, nudity, or maybe stuff they're not prepared to see. This kid actually did the right thing. The mother kind of did the wrong thing. But you know what? It all worked out at the end, and we got a great story to talk about. Exactly, Bueller. And it's these types of instances that we're trying to avoid. But I thought that's a good example about how comic books and kids don't always go together. And this is a common misconception that since the early 70s, we've been trying to fight. 